Good morning, gardening friends. I'm Lark, and it's Tea Time Tuesday. Time for my tour. I'm going to give you a tour of what is blooming new this week. Bee Balm is just outstanding right now. And this is a lot of shade. Also the Perilla self sows but it's filling in like a ground cover. Feverfew is still growing. And the hydrangeas I planted last fall, whoa, they're doing good. They're filling in to hide the trailer. One year old, almost bare rut. Our daylilies are starting to bloom. I have early, mid-season, and late, so we are going to show you the early ones today. I like taking the video in the morning because the spider ward is still open. And it adds just that dab of purple or blue along with the uh, crane's bill. It does have to be dead or cut down to the ground very soon. Even doing that, it's going to be seeding a lot. Next year I'm going to have more than what I need. A nice dark day lily looks best in part shade. Full sun just washes it out too much. So it's perfect under this tree here. White phlox <coughs> is giving me uh, brightness in this shady area. And the trumpet vine tree that broke off last year, but I have it supported somewhat with uh, branches. Just starting. The hummers are loving it. Baneberry, native. Another name for it is common name, doll's eyes. Nice foliage, kind of fern-like, isn't it? And you might be able to see down below there. We'll see if we get back there. A lot of feverfew lights up the shade with these hostas under this blue spruce. I've been burying my uh, garbage green waste around these hostas here because it is very dry under here and tree roots from this pine that's dying. Carl Forrester grass White phlox will get deadheaded and it'll keep blooming probably for another month at least. Nadia comes up here and there and I leave it and everywhere the burgundy flower. Barberry, pygmy barberry. Maltese cross in the likeness family. Whoa, those orange lilies are going to bloom. Tiger lilies are going to bloom very soon. It's going to be pretty. They reseed a lot. Easy to pull if you don't want them. Gloriosa daisies. Perennials and comegans, that's what's mostly in my garden. And foliage color is important to me. Variegated sedum.
is definitely a summer day. Another pretty red daylily. Now mine have just started, but they get a lot of shade, so they're doing good. Having a perennial border is nice at attracting lots of bees and butterflies, lots of pollinating insects. Flox, the white flax was the first to start blooming. See the flea bane still blooming. Back by the smoke bush too, that white with the burgundy looks good and free because many of you know fleabane as a weed. Come again, poppies, annual, tick seed, and a nice little, I think it's a Salome series of daylily. Tiny, it is a tiny one. That's why it's up near the edge of the grass path. Solomon seal for the foliage color. Stilbies are done. I usually leave that frothy seed head on. The other side of these daylilies, we were up there before. This is the other side, so it goes from the tallest medium height, I think that's Casa Regal, Casa Regal, and uh, a tiny one, variegated. Can you see the bane berry underneath? The red berries. And the fever few. And there's a lot in here to reseed. So it'll be more like a ground cover.
red astilbes. More burgundy color. So pretty. We trapped a woodchuck and there's another one I see around. We, as far as I know, we didn't get it last night, so I'll have to take a look. Where there's one baby, there's maybe like 10 more, so. We gotta get them. Gloria Osadizi, nice filler. Just throw the seed around. See, this is how it looks when you should deadhead it. Just pick off the bloom. That's a good one. So just deadheading. You can just do it with your thumbs. It's pretty easy even for these old arthritic thumbs. Yarrow. You can see back there, it's a little harder for me to deadhead the daylilies. It takes time to get back in there. But I do usually de deadhead the lilies every day. Or night, if I want to wake up and have the garden look tidy, I do it at night. A mallow, which I spread a lot of seed, and it just hasn't come up. I guess it's because... There's not much light in there. The purple summer flax. I just planted some Gallardia in here and I chicken wire it so the squirrels or the bunnies don't get at it for a while until it gets bigger. Drumstick Allium. Geranium. Spiderwort. Hens and chicks and moss. That was white. Heliopsis, variegated foliage. Another pretty day lily. I like these that are kind of triple. Hibiscus. And that is, um, I think that one's called plum pudding. And the lilies, more orange. You're going to see orange popping in the garden soon. Besides what I have in the milkweed right now. Still a few lilies left. Valerian. There was a time I wouldn't let the flowers intermingle like that. I wanted 
a spot for everything and everything in its place. Now I let it come up and I, I like it. It's kinder on my body and uh, I think it looks nice. It looks full and that's what I'm after. It hides a lot of the weeds. Veronica. I know it's pink, but it's called Red Fox. Front of the border. Oh, only about a foot high. Pretty striped to that day, Lily. Annabelle Hydrangea. Whoa, let's look at the trumpet vine. That's that tall arch I have behind the garden. Looking pretty. Thank you, Mother Nature. The hummingbirds just hover over there. Milkweed with the white flocks. I think that one's called David. I have David white flocks and uh, what's the other one called? Miss Lingrid. Supposed to both be mildew resistant. Front of the border, yep, it's tall. It's a good three feet. I use twigs. If you're just first tuning into my channel, I use dried twigs to prop up things. Perennials. Corabel. And this daylily here is very fragrant. I don't know the name of it. It's mauvey color. It smells like gardenias. After this flax blooms, it's coming out. It reseeded here, right near the front of the border. <coughs> and I want to put in uh, some other low-growing perennial there. My newly planted area, which I'm trying to keep watered. Put in some Gallardia, uh, a miniature one called Arizona Apricot that uh, Katie brought me, brought me three plants. So put one there and one there. And you guys also know I like planting in triangles. I'd rather have three small pots than one large. And amongst that, I put uh, the likeness that is that real fire engine red. Maybe you I don't see any blooming right. Oh yeah, I do. So in with that, I put the um, likeness, and that's the. Okay, we're getting up on it there. It's that one. I put that maybe about seven plants around it. So we'll see how that hot colors look, which look usually good in partial shade. Another red daylily back there. Little zebra grass. It's the only one that survived in my zone four or five Wisconsin garden. And the fever few with the rose campion and some blue spider wart. Now these are all aggressive plants, and if I didn't have them, look how bare it would be. That is Elijah blue lime grass, and I have it in a pot. 
and it stays more behaved but it doesn't look as pretty as when you have it in the ground and it goes crazy but I don't feel like having a grass take over and it is very aggressive I think that Elijah blue lime grass was used to hold in hillsides oh I forgot this one this is a pretty one daylily I like the oh I have it I think I showed you on the other end of the garden and that a pretty burgundy then the green leaves and then burgundy ground cover with the perilla and white to brighten it all up Just starting to bloom. It'll, the new blooms are even taller, so it'll peek out through all that green. It's amazing how a bee balm grows in a lot of shade. In this corner, it adds color. Look, there's nothing else blooming right now. And that bee balm gives me color. But because it's more shady over here, there is other perennials that need to bloom. Phlox and uh, there is some Culver's root back there. But it'll be later. Ooh, lots of buds on this one. It's going to be pretty. Scarlet runner bean. The veggie garden. The west veggie garden. We'll walk past the wild side a little. Use up the rest of my, what, six minutes here? Down there is my other, my bog garden, veggie garden. I have back here, I have a, a lot of the orange ditch daylilies. But I like that orange with all this green. And flax is going to be popping big time back here. bee balm down in the shade and in the wild area.
an old spring, beer bottle, and a wine stopper, and amber plates. This one's called Buttercup. fan blade, no, a fan uh, grill, and a brush from a chimney brush, and rust. So my gardening friends, I made it through pretty much of the perennial garden, showing you what's blooming new. Mostly daylilies are new. So take care. Hope you enjoyed the tour. And join me again next week, Tuesday. Thanks for visiting. Bye-bye.